So, so when we compare, when we continue to compare ourselves to others, um, I think it erodes our ability to make an impact. What do you think? Now I don't know because <laughs> you have taken this train ride around several different mountains and through tunnels and even underwater at some point. And so now we're in, where are we, where are we now at? To get somebody back. one time said, <clears throat> somebody one time said to me uh, something about the way that my brain works. So I, when I recruited IT, I recruited Oracle DBAs which is a relational database. So uh, before we had hierarchical databases, right? Where we just stack data on top of each other. Oracle in a relational database means that uh, not only- You remember I'm it... IT, right? Pardon me? You remember I'm an IT guide, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you don't need to explain this. To your audience. Oh, okay. Well, I might edit this part out. I don't know. <laughs> I was good with, I'm going to do this in series now, not as a whole, because this is sure. an hour long conversation. Sure. So this sure, is going to sure. be broken up into education with Jacqueline Gordon. Yeah. I'm over here. I'm over here in the corner just listening. Okay. Because I want to go back to the whole community part, because right. that was the okay. essence of the value of the impact because we need the community in order for things to work and that's what one of the things that john had to learn in the story is that he couldn't right. climb the mountain alone he needed a team he needed a community he needed cheerleaders and he needed somebody to believe in his vision as much as he did maybe even more because he was the one carrying that load and that, and you'll see that because you said you're only halfway right, through the book. Right, floor. right, right. So I, he wasn't um, trying to make an impact. He was trying to find himself. And in finding himself, he made an impact. Have you read um, Way, read of the Peaceful... <clears throat> Way of the Peaceful Warrior? I have not. It's a short little read. It's a short little read. Um, I mean, one of the things that I took away because of where I was at at that stage in my life is uh, <clears throat> when the enemy pushes, do the unexpected and pull. <laughs> yeah, put them off balance. Yeah, right. I get that. Yeah, Catch them that's, on. That's, Catch that's totally a martial arts um, strategic uh, battle plan. Um, Right, right. Um, and, and um, but I think finding yourself is like peeling an onion and it comes in layers. And I think part of that community support is I went, so I, so, so after college, uh, a guy that I and I went to work eventually as a pet hunter, uh, a guy I had went to school with um, who was like in the nerd crowd, right? Joined Kendall and Davis as a recruiter. Okay. And was really my first exposure uh, to Kenny. Um, and I just found him bright and insightful and hilariously funny. I mean, nobody does dry better than 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 Ken Zuck, right? And I and I love all of that. Um, and so I had gone back to Fort Wayne, which is where I went to high school, Indiana, and. Uh, a group of other people asked me to meet them at a high school football game. I'm like, listen, I didn't like this when I was in school, but okay, right? And and and, and I got there. I straddled a bunch of different groups, right? And I got there, and uh, 
And I said, eventually, I said, has anyone seen uh, Zook? And one of these people looked at me and said, why are you looking for Zook? Ooh, kind of thing. That they still defined him by who he was in high school. And, and and it occurred to me that um, no wonder it took man a million years to learn to walk upright. <laughs> sakes, Nothing changes. Goodness sakes alive. Of course, one of the great uh, loves of my life. Uh, and how can I not love a man with this kind of wisdom? Uh, Timmy Bob, uh, one of the little pieces of wisdom he imparted on me was everybody has at least five years of good looking in them. And some people are stupid and waste theirs in high school. <laughs> and, 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 and for all of us, I mean, I went to one reunion because my friend asked me. She said, come, come, come. I don't get to see you. She lives Your in high Michigan. school reunion. Right, right high school reunion. Yeah. And, and so, so in seventh grade in Fort Wayne Community Schools, they did, they called it laning students. So there were the X's who were the very brilliant kids. And there were the Y's who were kind of like everybody. And then there were the Z's we should have been much nicer to because they're now the auto mechanics and the electricians and the plumbers, right? And, and I'd spent, uh, and no one ever said you're a smart kid. Never. To you. To me. Although I, I skipped two us. grades in elementary school, right? They just said there was room in this class and they thought I'd be more comfortable there. So, so I... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. So, so, you know, uh, I get to seventh grade and lo and behold, I'm an X and they're in this school with 400 seventh graders. There were only 28 of us who were in this X class. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and this group, uh, from junior high, all the way through high school, we really kind of did the same classes and the same thing and sort of were on and, and uh and I remember and one of the guys, uh, my great high school crush, uh, when I'd gone back to this high school reunion, he's out he, he's out, you know, sitting on a table out, out in the lobby. I went out there and plunked down and and looked at him and I said, Neil, who 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 invited all of these old, fat, gray-haired, bald people to, no offense, to our reunion? Hey, wait. <laughs> you didn't say that because I'm bald now, did you? I'm going to edit that part out, too. Uh, and he was like, is this the last one you're coming to? I said, it's going to take cash to get me to another one. <laughs> but... You know, it, it, it goes back to, I think part of self-growth is, uh, and part of becoming a community, um, is knowing when you need help and asking for it. That has been the hardest thing for me to learn. You know, I'm a smart woman. I can figure out a lot of things. And if not, there's a, a YouTube video that'll show me how to fix my lawnmower. <laughs> right? And and, uh, and if I really can't figure it out, I mean, it was really hard. I mean, that was the hardest lesson I think I had to learn was how to be vulnerable and ask for help. What I found when I reached out and asked for help is the gratitude that other people felt being able to offer help. Hmm. Yeah, 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 sure. I can, 
you know, I was uh, at the grocery store today and there was this small little elderly lady trying to get, you know, a three pack of paper towels down. And, and it was just so natural for me. I said, let me do that for you. I'll get that for you. Right. Such an easy thing to do. Um, and I you, think you offered to help. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, uh, in my faith, I don't believe at the end of our life that it will be a review of those things that we have done. I believe it will be a review of those times that we were asked to do something and we said no. And what happens then? Well, when you believe that, when that kind of creeps into your consciousness, um, I, for me, I'm more aware of, can I help? Can I do something simple? Right? Um, if I see someone in need, can I be the person who takes care of that, even if it's as simple as getting a three pack of paper towels down off of a huge shelf. But what about flipping the coin? You said it was difficult to ask. So you have to become better at asking, even if you know how to do something. That was my great, that was my great if I know how to do something, I'm going to do it. But you know, um... then there's no there's no negative about that. It's but it's about seeing somebody else's capabilities and saying, "Hey, right. can you help me?" and giving them exposure and credit, even though you can do it. Right. Right. Well, um, there's just a ton of stuff that I can't do. Or choose not to. I do think, you know, life is not about learning how to do everything. I think uh, a big part of it is learning what you should always pay other people to do. So I don't do my own electrical. I don't do my own dental work. And I never color my own hair. <laughs> I don't color my own hair either. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I, I had a friend say, oh, something about her sister and could I help and I said she said yeah she she colored her own hair and I'm like <laughs> can't, can't, won't touch that <laughs> yeah I I was a wee one Keith and my so my grandmother my mother and my sister all look alike right five foot four dark hair dark eyes really thin hair my sister couldn't grow a fingernail of her life depended on it i have these rock hard things that i have to keep trimmed back right and a head and and a head full of thick hair mm. and uh so for some reason though um my mother and my grandmother thought it would be a brilliant idea to give me a tony home perm <laughs> And I have no clue as to what that is. So, so Tony was a uh, cosmetics hair care company, right? And and uh, in the 1970s, they advertised you could give your your hair a permanent, which is going to put curl in your hair. That idea. And yeah, 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 right. And it, it the the Tony Home Perm. And the perm rods came and all the solution and right. And, and so my mother and my grandmother, who don't have enough hair between the two of them, uh, decided that they were going to give me this Tony home perm. So they take the rollers out. It's a process. It's a stinky process. To take the rollers, the perm rollers out when it's all processed and done and rinse it through. And uh and and they start to dry my hair. 
And even as a four-year-old, I understood when my mother said, oh my. <laughs> Poor girl. Oh my. Oh my. The world stopped. I had the biggest blonde fro you have ever seen in your life. <laughs> and you're going to tell me there is no picture ever. It's got to be somewhere in somebody's photo album. So uh, you don't have to show it, but oh my is right. Oh my. Right, right, right. That was, <laughs> I, I saw this post on LinkedIn the other day where somebody had put their their picture of when they were in the ninth grade. And, and my response to it was for me to post my ninth grade picture would involve copious amounts of cash. <laughs> so, so after the Tony home perm, oh my, right. I, I, uh, I ventured in, I was four years old. I ventured into my first hair salon and took note that there were things that you should not do to your hair on your own kind of situation. So, um, and dental work are... is one of them. Oh, yeah. Dental work. Because I'm assuming somebody <laughs> tried that then, but I'm not going to ask. <laughs> I was really fortunate in that uh, my family didn't have a lot of money, to say the least. And, um, and I was really fortunate to get these great straight perfect teeth to the point so the guy that does my headshots my photographer uh when we reconnected a number of years back uh and you know i'm in the studio and he's working on the headshot and i smiled and he goes that's that million dollar smile my picture used to be in my dentist office <laughs> When your when your dentist recognizes, right? Perfect. But but um, there are things that that I just can't do on my own, right? That that I have to ask for help. Um, and that's okay. And. and I think more than I think more than okay, right? Um, because, like you said, it gives that other person the opportunity to help to get into the helping and you know just ignoring, right? We, we've gotten into a, a society. Um, we've learned to ignore the homeless. They've become invisible, right? We don't have this. You know, we, we have discussions about how they need to pull themselves together and get a job and blah, 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 right? We don't have discussions that at this point in the United States, we are short 6.5 million housing units to house everyone in the United States. 6.5 million, right? And, and, um, I know where we could put them, but I'm going to get in trouble if I say it online. <laughs> Because there's a lot of rich people out there <laughs> with lots of money. So I'm not um, going to get in trouble. I do think we have to look at affordable housing, right? I do think we have to look at different ways of building, of housing. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen, oh, what's Mark's last name? Does it has a YouTube channel called Soft White Underbelly, um, and he interviews uh, the homeless in LA. Um, and you know, some of them are working two jobs, and housing has become so unaffordable, hmm. right? Um, We'll see the market correct. I couldn't believe that people were, 
you know, buying houses sight unseen. That was just all that pent up from 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 COVID, from you know, two years of a shutdown. Um, I think you're going to see a huge correction in the housing market. You, you couldn't help but. Um, but yeah, and instead of talking about solutions, right? We just, you know, that conversation is just, you know, get yourself together and get a job. And it just doesn't, it just doesn't cut it anymore. So, you know, the church I went to when I was originally in Knoxville, uh, talking about community. So the first time I went, and I went on the recommendation of a plumber. I mean, you know, if you can't trust a plumber to tell you about a good church. And, and uh, so, so I went, boys were with their dad that weekend. And they said, if you're a first time, at, at the very beginning of the service, if you're a first time visitor, stand up. We'd like to acknowledge you because we know how difficult it is to come to a new church the first time. And then toward the end of the service, they said, uh, once again, if you're a first time visitor before everybody goes rushing out, we'd like you to go out first because we have a special reception for you. So I go out, you know, they've got some stale Danish, um, some awful coffee and I'm a food snob. I'm happy to admit to being a food and coffee snob. So I go down there and then they handed me this little white cardboard box tied with string. Right. And I'm, I'm thinking I take it home and set it down and I'm thinking it's, you know, religious tracks and bad pens. I mean, if I could have an 11th commandment, it would be thou shall not give out a crappy pen. I hate crappy pens. So, so <laughs> I was I was recently at a conference and going through all the different vendors booths to see who had a decent pen. <laughs> so so uh, so it was late that afternoon and I cut the strings open and opened that box and inside were a dozen homemade cookies and a little note that said we always felt like homemade cookies felt like home. We hope you have found your new church home. They had a group that did nothing but bake cookies. They had twice a year, almost like a job fair, the different groups would that did different volunteers, whether you know you helped take care of the landscaping outside or whether you were on parking patrol or whatever the situation was, but they had probably 40 different groups. Wow. And uh, Nora King, uh, who's the co-pastor, it was Nora King's idea. And she said, <laughs> we put, we wanted these little groups to start to build community to then build larger communities. And I thought that was, and 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 much of the thinking that went into building community at this little elementary school was based on the 110 ways to volunteer. Um, Jacqueline, I'm really glad that you brought it full circle because <laughs> I was really concerned that you weren't going to be able to. Oh, baby, trust me, I'll get you there. <laughs> <laughs> but I so appreciate you know you taking the time to, one, read the book, and really think about it um, yeah. and challenge it, you know, because it's part of part of writing and part of the reading process is, you know, do I agree with what's being said? Do I not agree with what's being said? And then to ask why and then take that point of reflection and then tell the author, I don't agree with this at all. <laughs> and so because that's pretty much what you did. And I'm very thankful for it. And. I want once I kind of go back and review sure. this entire entire footage that we created right. together, and right. I won't post it as a whole. Okay, I'll, I'll break it up into pieces and have it as a series of its own playlist as a series. But I want to go back because I do want to I do want to make a my initial intention, if I could sell like at least a half a million of these books to kind of get some an audience behind it. 
I want to put four into a series and I want to take the part. This is like a good 45 minutes ago. When you first start talking about the idea of community and how that's built. And I want to use that as part of the series of books because I thought that was so valuable, but I would have to ask permission. And so I'll ask permission now, but when it comes time to, to actually write it, I want to come back and ask permission again because I thought what you had to say and how you said it and the and the picture that it paints was so was so important. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'll let you know when I uh I've never been so busy in my life. <laughs> so I can with, uh, with education falling around, falling apart around you, you got to be doing something. Um, presenting at conferences and speaking to groups. Um, I had a group from Kuwait reach out to me about recruiting 15 teachers, right, for Kuwait. And when I told them my fee for each one, they about had a heart attack. Uh, we were only off by about thirteen thousand dollars, and uh, and I said, my projection um, is at the end of this school year we will have seven hundred and fifty thousand vacant teaching positions across the U.S. or across, across what? the U.S. Okay, across the U.S. And we only have 51,000 new teachers who will join the ranks because 40% of all new education graduates never go into the classroom after graduation. The teacher shortage starts with colleges and universities. I mean, waiting until the second semester of their senior year to toss them into in a classroom. classroom. Yeah. Um, and, 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 I know both from my research and, and my personal experience, teachers have an age group that they lock and load with, right? In elementary, it varies from lower L to upper L. Um, and as a side note, I think all kindergarten teachers sound like Snow White. Um, in, in high school, there are those that never want to teach a senior. There are those that only want to teach a senior, right? And middle school is that unique group that on a daily basis, you may think to yourself uh, for that student, listen, no judgment, but one of us may be under medicated here. <laughs> <laughs> Our education system does not give them that exposure. And, and I had a principal who said, I, I thought that elementary school was where I wanted to be. And I did a summer school position and at, at an elementary school and it was like, mm -hmm right um but we don't give them that exposure we don't give them enough time you know you've taught the more you do it the better you get right mm -hmm. um the more comfortable you get um so so uh, are we at the tipping point i i and, and, you know, um, so Indiana legislature, so I work with a, a group of schools in Indiana and, and the Indi and the executive director called me one day, just as mad as could be. And they had gone up to present what the teacher shortage in Indiana would look like and, and to see if they can, you know, get some traction legislation, blah, 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 blah. And the Indiana Education Committee, Legislative Education Committee refused to put it on the agenda because I love this, everybody's having trouble hiring. Hmm. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. Do they lay in bed at night to justify this stuff? I mean, it's, but really interesting. I talked to, so in South Carolina, and I've been in South Carolina a lot in the last three, four months. Um, 
working with a group of charter school administrators. And uh, there is a group called Sarah, and they put forth a supply and demand uh, in terms of teachers report every year. And the past three years, the number of teachers leaving positions, that doesn't entirely mean leaving education, has increased four to five percent. If everything stays on trend, and there's no reason it would not, uh, this year, 25% of the 51,000 teachers employed in the state of Tennessee will leave their current position. So that's 13,000 vacant positions. Oh, boom. <laughs> Someone said to me recently when I said, you know, 40% never go to work in a classroom, they said, well, where did they go? And I'm like, Walmart pays $18 an hour now. That's kind of starting teacher pay in many, What's many, degree, many, yeah. many. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this group, we're working on some strategies. I just never get over that. But, you know, in talking to Jennifer um, Garrett, who's the co-director, she and her other co-director are now doing face-to-face -face interviews with teachers who are leaving the profession, mm -hmm. right? Without judging. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Independent third party. Okay. Right? Um, about why they're leaving. They've done about 150 of these interviews now. And not a single person has said they were leaving because of the money. Every single person has said that they are leaving because of the culture of the school. Wow. Well, then that is evidence enough, you would think. But that- so I have to tell enough. you one quick story. All right, go you're ahead. Gonna, you're going to love this one. So one of my clients uh, got a hold of me about six months ago, and they'd had this position for a grants and curriculum position open for about a year. So 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 they called and said, we just want you to pre-screen, right, those who have applied and uh, and rank them. And then the top three, we want you to do reference checks on them. So a background check will tell you if somebody's done something wrong. A reference check will tell you if there's a likelihood they'll do something wrong. So I ranked them, right? I have one guy that wasn't qualified at all. And I think everyone needs to know why they didn't get the position. I think that's only right. Um, and, 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 uh, and he wasn't going to take no for an answer. This guy said to me, he goes, well, I've seen what they're looking to pay for this. And I think given the pay scale, they shouldn't expect too much. <laughs> I'm like, geez, I, I never. That's an answer I, you I, would I, give. I, I, I've never seen insult the recruiter and her client as being a winning strategy, but. <laughs> well, come on. You would have said something very similar in a situation very similar. Uh, so, so, uh, <laughs> so the number two dude right? I had, he was getting too familiar too quickly. And uh, so when I do a reference check, I want to talk to someone who's been over you, under you, and beside you, right? To get that 360. So I'm talking to a parent and, and he told me he was no longer the elementary school principal because he lived right across the street from the elementary school. And he felt like he was always on, he was always the principal, right? Whatever story you want to tell me. So she's going on and on about how fabulous he was to her girls and all the students and blah, blah, blah. We're 20 minutes into this conversation and she says, of course there was, <coughs> pardon me, of course there was that one little thing, right? So my, my Scooby radar goes, my Scooby radar goes, rawr, rawr. <laughs> that was not, I think she slipped. She that was not supposed to happen. But but I know if I say what one little thing was that, she'll shut down, right? 
So I finally get a hold of his superintendent and she answers with one word answers. So I called my client and I said, I can't quantify it. I can't validate it, but something went on that he's no longer the elementary school principal. So my client knew two of his three references. So she calls me back a couple of days later and she goes, okay, so here was that one little thing. He was having an affair with the kindergarten teacher. His wife found out she put all his belongings out on the front yard right across the street from the elementary school with a large sign that said, you lying, cheating bastard, come get your shit. <laughs> God, I love community, don't you? That's perfect. Oh, hey, always a pleasure. Again, congratulations on the book. I will let you know uh, when I get it finished. Um, you know, I'm... I, I'm I'm hoping for rain tomorrow personally. <laughs> so I have a reason to, to stay in. During the shutdown, uh I I went to work uh as a master gardener. I'm a master gardener, right? Okay. So, uh, okay, so I'll take your word for it. All right. Two years of study and 500 volunteer hours. Wow. My volunteer hours were at a site that has been deemed a national historic site that was actually a Civil War hospital for both Union and Confederate soldiers. And when I first went into it, Keith, you can still see where the blood stains had permeated the wood floors. I mean, like, you know, you can feel the spirits kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but uh, so somebody got word of the fact that I was a master gardener. and. And and so, you know, I, I do like, but here's the scoop. You do one little part of the garden and the rest of it just looks like crap. <laughs> My yard is the same way. <laughs> then I have to go to the other part and fix that too. And, 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 uh, and, and they're like, well, let's go look at this area. I was so relieved yesterday when, when one of my clients said to me, she goes, I've decided that I don't want to expand the garden. I'm like, <laughs> so yeah, so that's why I'm hoping. It's going to rain. How's your daughter? She's 13 now. So you know and... that middle school crazy. <laughs> It's she's she's a good girl and she's got some two, three really good friends. Actually, she's going down to, you know, you know I live in Virginia, right? So, right. I'm, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, North Carolina border just real close. And so they're going out to uh, Kitty Hawk tomorrow. Oh. Uh, they're, they're, one of their friends parents got a camper. And so uh, they're taking the girls out for overnight. And she's looking forward to it. Yeah. But she's talking yeah. about, you know, she's talking about going to, they actually have dances at the middle school level. And so I'm not too keen with that. But uh, she says, you know, the girls hang over here and the boys hang over there. And so I was like, still not too it, keen it, on it. And it I'm the daddy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody needs... There's a YouTube channel called uh, Special Books for Special Kids. And, and this whole channel is devoted to children who have physical disabilities or learning disabilities. Yesterday's was on uh, a boy with fragile X. Hmm. So in young males, fragile X chromosomally, those young males have additional X chromosomes and he's nonverbal and he has some autistic symptoms and he becomes fixated on things. And, uh, and, and she had uh, two other young children. Uh, he was the baby of the family. He's three, I think. Um, and uh, and her husband is deployed. And all I could think of, Keith, is 
I don't know where you're at, but I'm I, I'm on my way. So you can take a bath by yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was a day I'm trying to get a bath real quick and uh, Jordan's sitting up on the back of the, the toilet and he's, Jordan's a little guy, right? And he looks at me and goes, Mommy, if you didn't shave the furs under your arms, would the furs under your arms get as long as the furs under daddy's arms? How about the furs on your legs? And I'm like, Jordan, does Mr. Rogers cover any of this topic? <laughs> I don't think so. Why am I giving money to PBS? <laughs> well, he's just trying to get a bath here. But go look at, um, and, and I'll shoot you an email. Go look at soft white underbelly. Okay. What Mark does is remarkable stuff. You know, in that whole community vein, yeah. um, when we don't look at all the community, there was one time I was flying out to somewhere, guys standing by the side of the road. <clears throat> and uh, I'm not here to judge what they do with the money. Doesn't matter to me, right? If God tells me to give it, I give it. And I handed him a $20 bill. And, uh, and I said, I'll pray for you. And he stopped and he said, my name is Greg. Tell God that Greg needs him. Did you? On $20, right? And, and it was a real big lesson to me about not ignoring, right? Everyone is a part of my community. I don't care. So, hey, good to talk to you. Edit this down, whatever you want to do with it. I'll let you know when I get the book finished. Happy to write a review. When you get it edited down, send me the link. I... Uh, 12,000 people that follow me and uh, belong to 21 different groups that I post in daily on LinkedIn. Um, and I'm happy to promote this, just promote it, promote it, promote it, promote it. Well, what, I'm, what, I, what I mean by edit it, so I'll probably chunk it into five or six minutes, wherever those story elements sure, are. Sure, sure. And so, and then... So like I said, it'll be a series, not just one big video. You know, and I think, especially on YouTube, it's um, the four to five minutes that uh, have the greatest impact. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I mean, you know, just look at look at the algorithm. And I think that's um, that's really where you're starting to see the biggest change. I have a friend of mine who has a YouTube channel, right? Um, it all started, and I'm not a camper. I mean, anytime I have to get up and get dressed and put my shoes on and walk down the road to pee first thing in the morning, not for me, right? Um, but he did this whole camping thing, and and he's just hysterical. Um, and and we've become, you know, I think I think there were maybe. 500 subscribers when I linked into it. Um, but uh, he's actually starting to, he's close to 10,000 now. Yeah, camping is a big thing. He's really goofy. <laughs> I, I mean, So in one of the videos, one of the early ones, uh, he got this new axe and he ended up hitting his ankle with the axe, right? Oh my gosh. Or cut his shin, I think, with the axe. And then uh, left, but left a big knot on his ankle. And I said, I think, I think you were just, you, he goes, I don't remember this. And I said, well, you're so distracted by your bleeding leg, right? So in the next video, he said, yes, once again, we're going to try out axes. And he comes out and he has two bed pillows duct taped to his caps. 
goes, this week I'm prepared. Good for him. <laughs> like, oh, goodness sake. So, yeah, I'm going to let you go. Edit away. Always good to see you. Congratulations on the book, Keith. Hey, same. Thank you so much. You're so Take welcome. Care. Thank you. Bye-bye.